Hello, YouTube. Today's video, I'm going to introduce something that I've been working on for a while. And um, I actually think it's pretty cool. We have a really awesome development team that has come up with, I think, a pretty cool design here based on the requirements that, um, that, that I provided probably about six to eight months ago. So this has actually taken quite a while. But um, we're ready to release a beta. Um, and some changes in the way that uh, you can utilize AS3. So ultimately, what we're doing here is to change the functionality of AS3 to allow you to declare on a per application basis. And that's actually quite interesting. So let's take a look a little bit about what does that mean and what are some of uh, what are some of the things that you can do to ultimately, I think, improve the usability here um, with regards to AS3. But it does also require some discipline um, because there are a few interesting things that you have to take in mind. So first thing I want to do is, as you ver as you as you can see, I'm just doing a simple get to the app services endpoint. So just pull in the info here. And as you can see, what's, uh, what's come back is the version of AS3. So this is version 47. This is gonna be released um, shortly. Uh, you'll see what re release this is, probably one of the latest builds um, that we come up with here. I'm running version four, um, but you'll see this. So as long as this, the start is in version 47. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a de declaration. So this was my previous declaration, I don't worry about that. But what I've done here is I'm gonna do a get to the declare endpoint just to kind of see um, what is there um, on the endpoint. Then what I'm gonna actually do, uh, you can see there's nothing actually, there's no AS3 that's being configured on the system. Since I did a, a get to the declare endpoint, there's actually nothing that shows up. So what I, I, I want to do here is next, I actually want to go ahead and do a get to the settings endpoint. And as you can see, the settings endpoint is interesting because the setting end, settings endpoint is what exposes this beta object. So this allows me to actually change the, the, the way that the API endpoint actually works. So to move that endpoint to a per app deployment instead of um, instead of the way that it, that it functions today. And I can toggle this based on the configuration. That's what I'm gonna do. So what I wanna do first is I want to actually post a AS3 declaration. So here's an actual AS3 declaration that I'm posting to declare. I'm posting this tenant of per app API. And we'll talk about why we wanna do this. I'm posting a very simple application with the virtual name, the virtual server, the port, the pool, and then here's the pool with pool two members. So you can see 31 lines. It's a full declaration. I'll go ahead and, and post that to the system. So this is how you would post something globally or if you want, you could actually physically specify the tenant and you can change it to asymmetric. You can do many different things there, but you would post it to the tenant right here. Here I'm just showing you um, kind of like what what I what I kind of like want to post. So this would be the traditional message, traditional method where you post into the API, API itself. Now, based on here, what I can actually go ahead and do is I can actually go then and get that get that declaration back to actually kind of to kind of see what's there. So as you can see, I've posted to the AS3 endpoint. This AS3 endpoint has has actually one application in this endpoint. Great. Now what I want to do is I want to add application B and application C. But here's the difference. I don't want to update the AS3 declaration with application B. I want to just post application B. So what does that look like? That would mean that I would just post application B by itself. Ooh. So if you try to do this today, what will happen, it, it, it'll probably error out because it doesn't actually have the tenant name, et cetera, right? But because AS3 is declarative and it's still declarative, you would have to add application B to application A and post that either to the declare or the tenant declare. Now you have the, app, you have the opportunity to post to the application's endpoint and let AS3 take care of the diff and merge. This is like a 
hope. This is like a put. You put in an update on the system. You then get the update, update your your master declaration within your Bitbucket or GitHub, and that would be part of your pipeline. So this is like out of band making updates or updating to the resource. The resource would be the tenant slash applications. So let's go and do that. But before I do that, I have to go and change the I have to go and change the beta options from false to true. And so when I change that to when I change that to true, it will change the functionality of the API. So I'm gonna post that to the settings endpoint. Gonna change the functionality of that now from a false to a true. And so that will now allow me to then go ahead and jump into per app API. And so that is now the beta option and that's the beta that we have based on this release. And so what I can do now is let's go ahead and do a get to the settings API just to make sure that the value here shows of true. As you can see, yes, it does. I'm ready. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go and post this application B. And I've actually just uh, posted that app. And then what I can do is I can then go ahead and do a get get that get that uh, get that that declaration. Before when I did a get, it was only the before when I did a get, it was only the 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 the, the first the first app right. The first app was 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 there when I posted the first app. Now I've actually gone in and posted B. You see, it's actually just posting there. But if I go ahead and get that declaration, which is what I'm going to do here, this was the first application that I did. As you can see, I'm doing a get to the declare. We'll go ahead and do a, another get here, and we'll see ultimately what happens. Okay, interesting. So application A is there, and let's go ahead and do that based on the app. There's application A, there's application B. Interesting. So now you can see the update. So app A and app B. My initial post was only app A, and then I did a per app of app B. So as you can see here, I posted application B. There's the 200 OK. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make an update and post application C. So this is app C, virtual IP address pool. As you can see here, it's simply just 25 lines. Just a simple application update that I'm going to post again to declare apps, declare tenant applications endpoint. And so I'll go ahead and post this. And so what this is now allowing me to do is this allow this is allow, allowing me to like um, put updates onto the system or make incremental updates and not initially have to worry about have I merged the configuration, but leave that up to leave the merge and the diff up to AS3. And so as long as you are updating the tenant application, this process is fine. Now remember, this is a beta, so you're welcome to actually start to test this, and I would, of course, love the feedback. So once this is posted, now I can actually go, and you can actually see that the results is back. So you can actually see there, there is the post of C. That's the post of C right there. And I'll go ahead and get the entire declaration. So as you can see, I'm going to get the declaration. So at this point here, it's going to go ahead and get everything that's on the system. And as you can see here, there's application A, application B, application C. So that was three apps. If I have a fourth app, I can keep on posting. But you're going to get to a point that where you might want to change now that I have, let's say, for example, I've made my incremental updates. I'm happy with these updates. So now what I can actually do is I can go back into posting a change here and I can actually go ahead and make this false. So what I've done now is I'm moving back to the traditional way that the system works. So I've changed the API back to false again. And so now I take my declarations, I update my pipeline 
or I update my declaration as my source of truth. So this ultimately here, this get request, these four, these three apps is my source of truth. So this is what I would update in my pipeline. So if you run a pipeline or a nightly, then what will happen is AS3 will come back as no change. So that you've incorporated all those changes, those incremental changes that you've made throughout the day. That's very important. That's on you to make sure that you update your pipeline or what's going to happen is when you run your pipeline, you're going to actually um, kind of like mess up your incremental changes. So that's, that, that, that is basically how this works. And if I go back now and do a get on the API, um, we'll do a get on the API. You can see it was true here. So I changed the state again back to false. So now the system is back to the way it was working before. So you can now go ahead and declare state, etc. cetera, um, declare your pipelines and your configuration is basically the way it was working before. So what this demo showed is the capability of being able to incrementally update a tenant or a resource at the app layer or at the application to just be able to touch the tenant by using by, by posting an incremental update. An incremental update is obviously a new app by using the new API endpoint of tenant slash applications. Then what I did is I did a get request. I got that. I changed the settings back to false. And that would be my new source of truth. This would be my new source of truth here. These ones here are my incremental updates. So I think this is actually pretty cool. There's a couple other really cool changes that um, we're going to be introducing with regards to the mutex lock. So potentially maybe posting two tenants at the same time. That's coming. I will create a video on that one when, 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 when we're ready to release. But AS347 is where we are introducing, 47 is where we're introducing the settings endpoint and allowing this beta option. So I'd love to get your feedback. You can provide feedback to me on this YouTube channel. You can provide feedback to me on GitHub, um, etc. cetera. Um, but really look forward to how you like this feature, potentially what improvements we can make as well with regards to the per app API. So this is something new. I hope that you find this really useful. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, kind of let me know um, what your thoughts are or if you want to see any other AS3 videos. Thank you very much.